So in this video I want to show you how I uh, put my wave machine together and uh, my wave machine differs slightly from uh, other ones that you will find on YouTube because I actually put LEDs in the ends just to add a little bit more to the effect of the wave itself. Now I came up with this idea quite some time ago now it's actually taken me probably six months on and off to actually uh, finish this little project because uh, I kept uh, coming up with a few uh, brick walls that actually didn't work out too well so I'm going to give you an overview of how I uh, solved most of those but uh, this idea came about when I uh, saw an old video a lecture from uh, the early 1970s on uh, wavelength and uh, RF uh, wavelengths in particular and the guy who was doing the uh, lecture was actually using uh, neon lights to actually show uh, waves as they uh, propagate through uh, the actual length of the uh, fluorescent tube itself and it was really good and I thought if you can actually come up with something like that just to add a uh, little bit more to something uh, when you're actually teaching it if uh, you can actually visualize it and show show it in a visual way then people actually uh, take a lot more interest in the subject and normally as uh, you know you normally don't see something like uh, RF waves being propagated so I thought this would be a, a really good idea and uh, hopefully it'll look good as well now I wanted to actually use this as a uh, teaching tool in the classroom and uh, what I'm going to use for my rods here is uh, some hollow uh, balloon rods. These are 400 millimeters long and they're a hollow plastic and uh, there's a few videos on YouTube like I say and uh, you can use things like uh, wooden skewers and things like that but I wanted the hollow tube so I could actually run the wires from the uh, LED down inside the tube itself. So my idea was to actually have uh, an LED in each end of the plastic tubing like I have here. The wire coming up through the uh, centre of the tube in there so I could still balance it correctly and I could wire them all up in parallel and uh, still keep the voltage quite low and power all the LEDs as I'm actually using the wave machine. So what I wanted to do next was actually diffuse the light from the uh, LEDs just to make it a little bit easier on the eye. So I got these uh, ping pong balls off eBay pretty cheap. I think I got 300 for uh, about four pounds and uh, I drilled a small hole like I have in this one here. So they actually slip straight over the top of the LEDs and it does a really good job of diffusing the light. So the ping pong balls did a really good job of diffusing that light and to attach them permanently what I did is just add a little spot of super glue on the edge of each one and that did a good job of holding them in place. So next what I did I actually uh, constructed a frame that uh, was two and a half meters long. Now two and a half meters was uh, the uh, maximum length I could really build it here in the lab due to uh, the space here in the lab. But uh, two and a half meters enabled me to have uh, 22 of these rods spaced out at 80 millimeters apart from each other. And that would give me a, a good idea whether it was actually going to work, especially with the effect of the uh, lighted ping pong balls at the end. So I made the frame as I said and uh, I used gaffer's tape suspended from one end to the other and I just placed these on the gaffer's tape and uh, it actually because it's quite sticky it does do a good job of holding them in place there but uh, before I actually even wired these up I would uh, just give it a uh, quick test and uh, then I uh, actually came into one of my first problems with this design. So the first problem that I actually encountered is because we've got the ping pong balls at the end here and the rods themselves are just uh, hollow plastic, there wasn't enough mass in uh, this design to actually pass the energy on to the next uh, rod itself and ping pong ball and so on and so on down the chain there to get the uh, effect that I was wanting. So I got uh, these uh, quite large washers I uh, just had these lying around in my lab and what I did I removed the uh, ping pong balls off the ends and I super glued these to the uh, side of the uh, ping pong ball just to add a little bit more mass to it. So once I'd gone round and added more mass to the ends of the ping pong balls using the washers it did work 
a lot better than previously but uh, unfortunately it threw up a uh, new problem and that was to do with the plastic rod itself it just wasn't strong enough to uh, take the weight at either end and it started to bow like uh, this one is here and also when I uh, started the wave machine off this was actually springing as well so it was adding a second effect that uh, interrupted the wave as it was propagating down the wave machine so I overcome that by taking uh, one of the ping pong balls off again and adding some metal rod to the center of the plastic tube just to make it a uh, lot more sturdier and something else that I decided to change as well because I was going for the effect with the uh, illuminated ping pong balls I uh, found that illuminating both ends just uh, made it a little bit too messy so what I actually did is remove the LEDs from one end so uh, now what I'm doing is just actually illuminating one ping pong ball down one side of the uh, wave machine itself and that effect is uh, a lot better as it propagates through with the uh, effect of the illuminated ping pong balls so this is the uh, finished wave machine now as uh, I took you through some of the things that I did when I was actually building this when I actually come uh, to build this again which I uh, probably will do in the near future I will use slightly different materials and uh, I actually want some more mass on the uh, ends here so it actually propagates a wave for a uh, longer length of time but uh, as it uh, is now I can actually uh, tap it here and the uh, wave will propagate all the way down to the end and then reflect back on itself and come all the way to the start again so because it's got such a low mass I can only do that once so here it is actually working So with this machine then you can actually form a wave as I've just done by tapping it once at the uh, start of the machine itself but you can also pulse it to actually form a standing wave. So this is a uh, standing wave and when they all become in sync you'll see the wave form in the middle. Now of course the best effect with this actual uh, wave machine is when you actually turn the lights out. Now before I actually turn the lights out so you can see the effect I've also gone ahead and draped this blackout uh, curtain top and bottom just to black out uh, much of the background and give the uh, LEDs something to actually bounce in front of. Having this uh, black curtain here does really add to the effect and uh, how I've actually secured that I've used sellotape top and bottom I've just put a line across the top there and the line across the bottom so it does sag slightly just like the uh, wave machine does because you don't actually want uh, a great deal of the weight of the curtain actually touching down on the uh, masking tape running through the center of there otherwise some of its energy will actually be dissipated with the weight of the uh, blackout curtain so just bear that in mind if you're going to use uh, something like this and something else that I've done as well as well as adding the blackout curtain I've uh, also reduced the voltage to the LEDs using my bench power supply so the LEDs are just getting 2.5 volts at the moment and what that does it makes them slightly dimmer so we don't illuminate the background but uh, you do see the effect a lot more clearly then on the back background. So I've got this at the best viewing angle that I can get in my lab with my camera. I don't have a wide angle lens but I've got it positioned in such a way you should get uh, a good idea of the effect that I'm actually trying to get. So I'm going to start off very uh, simply by just adding uh, a little bit of uh, energy to the start here just by one pushing down movement so hopefully we get a wave propagating all to the end and then reversing back and coming back on itself again.
So something else that we can do with this machine is produce a standing wave. Now, instead of just uh, transferring energy to the first one and then that energy carrying along all the way to the end of the wave machine, then reflecting itself back along back to the start again, what we can actually do by rocking the arm, the first arm backwards and forwards, we can actually produce a standing wave that is energy from uh, the start is uh, actually traveling down the machine, but the same energy is being reflected back again. So when they're both actually come into contact, we actually get a standing wave that's not actually moving anywhere. So I've got a rhythm going on there and I've got uh, quite a large wavelength there just slowly rocking it backwards and forwards but what I can do now is actually rock it back backwards and forwards a little bit faster and of course change its frequency then and we'll get a much uh, narrower wavelength. So it's just a matter of finding that rhythm but as you can clearly see there that the wavelength is now much narrower because I'm actually pulsing it a lot quicker. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was just something that uh, I had an idea of doing uh, quite some time ago now, but uh, I just ran into so many brick walls I couldn't find the time to finish it. So I will be using this in the classroom to help uh, students visualise waves in the uh, real world rather than just uh, reading about them or looking at pictures. So if you did enjoy this video please give it a uh, thumbs up, any uh, comments or questions or anything you think I could do to try and improve this design please let me know and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.